allow me to introduce to you the next speaker, who will be presenting about unlocking education potential, harnessing AI's potential to transform education. With over a decade of experience in the technology industry, he currently serves as the Public Sector Account Manager of Amazon Web Services, covering key accounts in government, education, and nonprofit organizations. Prior to his stint in AWS, he previously worked for Microsoft Philippines covering the education sector. He has a strong educational background with a Master of Business Administration from the Asian Institute of Management and a degree in finance from the LaSalle University in Manila. Paolo also currently serves as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Alumni Association of the Asian Institute of Management. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause please for Mr. Paolo Balinas. Hi, good, uh, good morning pala. Good morning everyone. Once again, my name is Paolo. I'm from Amazon Web Services, AWS. So, thank you again uh, to Ms. Cheryl and the entire Nefilio Web team for inviting AWS to be a part of this uh, Moodle Moodle 2024, right? So, I was a speaker last year. It's great to be back. I'm energized, excited to share what AWS is doing uh, in the field of AI and how it is transforming the education in various industries, right? So my topic for today is unlocking education potential, right? How can we harness AI's potential to transform education? So uh, AI has been a hot topic. Uh, when I was invited by Ms. Sherry, right? So AWS to speak about AI, rather than deep dive in terms of the technicalities of it, uh, what I'm gonna do today is gonna share with you use cases and actual applications, right, that you can actually use uh, AI in your teaching practice, teaching and learning practices. So, like I mentioned earlier, Gen AI or Generative AI has been a hot topic, not just in education but across various fields, right? It's really transforming how uh, students, you know, the learning experience of students, uh, school operations and so much more. So today, I'm excited to share with you the different use cases that we uh, can actually apply AI in the learn teaching and learning practice. So when we talk about AI, um, when creating the slide, I was thinking, how can we relate it right, to the student life cycle journey? So there's several uh, pathways, there's several aspects that AI can be used in each of the student life cycle journey, from marketing to recruitment, all the way to becoming alumni and uh, being alumni of the school, right? So let's focus on the first two, marketing and recruiting and admissions and enroll enrollment, right? So I've been given the privilege to talk to a lot of schools and when talking to top level executives, one of their biggest questions is, okay, how can we use technology to increase student enrollment, right? So when talking to universities, residents, executives, right, um, they have a lot of data available, but they're not able to leverage on this. How can we use the data available for business-driven decisions, right? So in AWS, we're helping schools leverage on this data for proper uh, segmentation, advertising, and personalization. So what use case of AI is we're in discussions with the school. Uh, I'll just share an example. When I was a, a prospect for choosing a college, right? My biggest challenge was choosing the right course, right? So I ended up choosing a random course, eventually ended up shifting and whatnot. So this is not a unique story. We've seen a lot of students have trouble or struggle in terms of choosing the right course. So what we did is we worked with a school to come up with an AI course recommendation, right? In their website, they're able to input their uh, interest, maybe their uh, involvement in extracurricular activities, and based on multiple parameters, recommend possible courses that they might be interested in, that they might be passionate about, and at the same time, that they might be good on, right? So a lot of ways that we can use AI. The second one is forecasting, right? So how can a school properly allocate resources, right? Do we have enough classrooms? Do we have enough 
uh, teachers to actually meet the student ideal student to teacher ratio, right? So we are able to leverage on data to actually make recommendations on what courses may need more teachers, uh, what courses may need more classrooms, and so on, right? So taking it a step further, how can we use AI to actually help uh, schools? So I'll show you a quick video. So show of hands, uh, sino dito yung kailangan mag-report, kumuha ng report? Show of hands. Dami, no? Report. So you always have to make reports monthly, quarterly, or by annually or even annually, right? So taking it a step further, leveraging on AI in helping build uh, dashboards or reports, right? So we have a program called Amazon, a QuickSight Q, right? QuickSight Q. So if you notice in the video, um, I simply typed uh, monthly sales and profit, right? And it was able to connect to your data source, your knowledge base, and automatically create a chart for you. And it's even able to forecast uh, for example, uh, your student enrollment, right? It's able to connect your past enrollment history, uh, the student profile, where are they located, and rather than manually extract the data from your Excel sheet, for example, you're able to seamlessly connect your data, and AI will be able to understand uh, the current data points and create charts from there. So show of hands, who's always create ng reports? A lot, right? What if I told you there is a way to use AI to automate the entire report creation? So this is simply typing, ano, diba? Typing uh, the data that you want to see and uh, automatically generate graphs, right? So taking it even a step further, how can we automate the entire storytelling, the entire report, executive summary for your management, right? So same technology, now you can even automate it. Right? Creating charts is one thing, but building a story is another. So, if you see here, I simply type, uh, build a story of how to increase student enrollment, for example. And with one click of a button, you're able to, AI is able to generate and understand the data points that you currently have, share a background of what the data talks about, has specific charts, and even goes further in creating a recommendation. No? So, when I show this to schools, it excites them, right? Because management always asks for what's our uh, enrollment, how can we improve student enrollment, how can we improve uh, the student learning experience. So, with AI, you're able to have data points, data-driven decisions on what to do, right? So, it's quite transformational because uh, it automates a lot of things. It, uh, you, you're able to base your decisions of the school uh, on actual data points, on hard data points, right? And even the storytelling, chart generation, and recommendations can now be, uh, AI can be leveraged on. So we talked about marketing, recruiting, forecasting. The second one is learning content and personalization. So we talked about this uh, a lot during the last Moodle Moot, right? So AWS, Amazon Web Services, uh, for those of you who don't know, so we are, as, uh, our parent company is Amazon.com, right? This is the retail, uh, retail company. So we built a lot of expertise in terms of personalization, uh, making the relevant products uh, appear to uh, you in your screen based on your previous history, uh, interest and so forth. So the same technology and how we use Amazon uh, personalization in terms of when shopping can be used and integrated in Moodle, for example, right? In personalization of your course content, right? So imagine if you have a course database, a course back knowledge base. So you're able to customize the learning experience per student so depending on maybe their grades, their interests, where they have challenges, certain uh, content can be fed to them, right? If I'm a, I'm a finance student, right? It can build the pathway towards uh, building my skill set as a finance, uh, as a finance, uh, finance student. So 
the technology behind it is called Amazon uh, Personalize, right? So one use case example is Coursera, right? So they're a, a MOOC platform. So with the R technology, they're able to recommend courses based on their previous uh, watch history, their interest, and so forth, right? So the same technology, for example, can be applied with Moodle. If you have a knowledge or a repository of videos of content that can be fed to the student to personalize the experience and overall they enhance the way that they uh, they're, 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 they're the way that they learn right so next um, who here are educators just uh, educators right so do you spend a lot of time uh, creating uh, quizzes for example yes yes so, what if I told you uh, we can again use AI for uh, knowledge checks, uh, knowledge assessment. So, this is an example of you know being able to simply upload a course document. So, you simply drag and drop, you upload it, press continue, and AI will assess the PDF document that you have and automatically generate uh, questions, right? For you to uh, check whether or not the student's actually learning a specific topic, right? So it uh, offloads you with the need to create uh, course content, uh, questionnaire knowledge check for your students. But this, the next example I want to give, this is uh, for me very exciting, right? So who here is familiar with McGraw-Hill? McGraw-Hill, yeah? They're a publisher, right? So, haven't you noticed when talking to the kids nowadays, attention span is very short, right? Uh, that's why there's a huge, huge rise in terms of the platforms such as TikTok, you know? So, they uh, work with us to create an application called Sharpen Study App. So, the analogy that they use is if TikTok and a textbook had a baby. <laughs> Unique, no? So what does that mean? So it's taking the trend of how students learn nowadays, short form content, and taking the content, the, the content that they have, and making it into uh, interesting uh, short uh, video clips that where students can easily learn. So if you notice uh, in the bottom right where you're looking at, there's a video of a man talking about it, right? So this is also actually AI generated. Surprising, right? So what happens, the technology behind it is you can feed the AI with the content that you have. For example, if it's about geometry, rather than spend a one hour lecture of teaching geometry, you can use AI to consolidate all the information you have about geometry, ask it to create a video, one minute video splices, talking about different subtopics of geometry, creating uh, the content, creating the knowledge checks, uh, and so on, right? So it frees up the school's time uh, from actually creating content. Uh, you can actually use AI to automate the content creation, make it relevant, make it, make it more exciting for your students, right? So that's a study sharpen app. Next is learning content and uh, content classification. So especially when you have a lot of uh, courses available, content available, the biggest challenge is being able to find the right content relevant to a student, right? So we're able to use AI to quickly classify documents. This is one example. So if you're looking for a specific content, right? So you can type all scenes that feature a football field, right? So all videos, all uh, quizzes, everything related to the search field that you're looking for can be easily extracted and a student can easily access this data, right? So rather than manually search for the content that they're looking for, they're able to use and leverage AI to sift through the hundreds of information and feed them with the right information, right? So uh, I've experienced this, you know, a lot of our recorded sessions in AWS uh, are uploaded into our repository. But for me to understand and sit through an entire one hour, one hour video recording, right, of a, of a town hall, is very time consuming. 
So now, in AWS, you can actually search for a specific keyword of a specific video, and it gives you the exact timestamp kung kailan. So if I talked about automotive vehicles, for example, rather than watch, sit down and watch through the entire one hour video, it's able to give me the exact timestamp that I talk about a specific topic, right? So it's very helpful for schools because you're able to, uh, you know, fast, fast, uh, fast track the entire content searchability. So another important thing is content moderation, right? So a lot of uh, schools worry about, okay, are our students exposed to uh, safe information, right? So we even help with the content moderation piece. You can determine what are the parameters that are uh, that are powell, na hindi pwede sa mga student, like for example here, nudity, uh, and so forth. Inappropriate words, activity, you can censor that out uh, for content moderation. One example is Course Hero. They have 25 million study materials, course content, so they use AWS to help in terms of filtering, uh, inappropriate content and block that out, right? Next, uh, I'm just curious, uh, show of hands again, who here believes that hybrid learning is the way to go? Hybrid, I think a lot hybrid, right? So the, I'm not saying the beauty of what happened, right? But more of what happened, uh, the, the pandemic, it helped us realize the, the, the potential, right, of technology in education. So when talking to a lot of institutions, they uh, they view again that hybrid learning is here to stay because stay mainly because there's a lot of productivity gains uh, in terms of uh, them being able to reach more more students, being able to cater to the, each student's requirement. So the common question is virtual proctoring. Okay, so if we have uh, if we still promote distance education, right? How can we ensure that a student is uh, learning? So one of the biggest challenges is virtual quizzes versus virtual proctoring, right? So when talking to schools, some of them, they have their video conferencing platform. The teacher sits down, asks students to turn on their video camera and watch manually. 40 students, right? So it's a lot of prone for error. But we're able to automate that, right, with Amazon recognition. So what happened, the use case there is, if you have, uh, uh, for example, your, <laughs> your Moodle platform, right, and you have quizzes there. So you can actually embed this, and if you notice, I identified parameters in terms of, it will flag the proctor, whether there's a change or movement within uh, the video camera. So if a person, another person shows up, you can either program it to uh, either notify the proctor, flag it, or even be more extreme to shut down the entire exam platform, right? So it helps in terms of distance education, monitoring, proctoring. So the next, student success and retention. This one, a lot of uh, schools are looking into this, right? How can we ensure that our students are learning, stay in class, and are successful, right? So, I'll give a case study on University of East London, right? So, they're a public university based out of London, England. They have 25,000 students, right? So, they did an analysis uh, wherein for every student that dropped out, the drops out rather, they lose 12,000 pounds per year in fees and living expenses. So they asked AWS, how can we, uh, rather than at the end we find out that we lost X number of students, how can we help them even before it happens, right? How can we predict the likelihood that they would continue and finish the actual course? If not, uh, how can we take proactive measures to actually uh, help them provide uh, uh, remediation exams, for example, and whatnot. So the challenge was how can we reduce dropouts and improve student attainment. So what happened was they worked with AWS, a few days workshop, to create an uh, analytics tool, right? So what happened is they did an analysis based on multiple parameters. Umaten ba uh, What are their scores in the quizzes? And so on and so forth, right? 
So based on the different parameters, we were able to understand, right, the the likelihood based on historical data. If you are attending one class on site, if you are participating in activities, the probability of you to finish and continue, right? So because of this, they were able to significantly reduce their dropout rate. So if you see the chart, if it's blue, it's highly likely, highly likely that they will continue, right? And finish the entire course. If it's uh, red, it's unlikely, mainly because they're always absent, they have low grades, no morale, right? So it gave them data points for them to actually think of ways to reduce, uh, you know, to increase the likelihood that they would stay uh, and finish the course. So although this is not an education demo, I'll also share with you some of the things that we're doing in helping schools. So in the past, it was only an aspiration, right? To have a 24 by 7 tutor or a guide. That in the past, you know, how can we do this? So now with the advancements of AI, we, were a we are now able to do so by creating an AI tutor. So again, imagine if you have uh, course content. You can connect to your course content, and we have this tool called Amazon Q. You could simply uh, pick connect the, you know, point to the data source and ask any question about this. Although this example is about HR, asking about HR benefits, it can be applied to the same use case in schools, wherein if you have a lot of uh, a knowledge base, basically of course content, you can upload it into the system, and students can ask any question about that specific topic based on the knowledge base that you connected, and they would receive uh, you know, real-time guidance and advice. And it even shows them the, the source, the source of where the, oh sorry, yeah. It even shows them the source of where the, the reference material, right? So students can now have an AI tutor uh, readily and accessible on demand, right? So last is research. So just out of curiosity, uh, who here, who, which university here has uh, research practices. A few, a few, a few, right? So, even uh, in research, right, AI is now being extensively used and uh, and ex explored, right? So, uh, I've been talking to some universities where in they're uh, doing, for example, earlier was agriculture, right? So we work with a few organizations that uh, do studies, extensive studies on rice production. How can we understand the rice genome? To ensure that it's more weather resistant, it's uh, and so on, right? So uh, we are able to use AI to connect to thousands of data points and being able to harness the advantage of AI to actually uh, summarize, you know, build on top of previous data uh, sources and uh, focus on uh, you know creating that new uh, rice gene that's more weather resistant. So, for example. Uh, the biggest challenge of schools is a lot of researchers spread across different campuses, different uh, uh, departments, right? So they always start from scratch. So what if we're able to come up with a data exchange platform wherein all researchers, all research of agriculture, for example, can be sorted into one place and they can simply ask, right, uh, previous findings, what are the recommendations, what were the challenges, so that rather than always start, uh, always start from scratch, you're able to leverage other researchers' work and simply ask questions. Medyo malayit lang, but you can simply ask questions about uh, maybe a specific research that's done, and so on. So I'm almost done. I know I have a few more minutes left. Uh, continual improvement. Just want to emphasize that you know, with all these advancements in AI and technology, it provides a feedback loop. Right, for institutions to further enhance, better understand their students, how can we come up with uh, innovations to actually improve the learning experience. So creating that feedback loop. One last thing I wanted to uh, share is uh, addressing the skills gap with AWS Academy. So we have this free program readily available for institutions. So we work with several organizations from private enterprises, to SMEs, to government institutions, right? And there's a lot of interest. It's 
it's, it's a growing field in terms of uh, cloud computing. As, as more and more organizations move to the cloud, there needs to be parallel investment in terms of the talent that we have. So currently, uh, we have seen a gap between what the industry is looking for and the talent pool available. So we're also working closely with universities by providing free content through our AWS Academy that builds on skills from foundation level all the way to advanced like AI, machine learning, data analytics, and so forth, right? So through this program, uh, we provide you with uh, curriculum, uh, lecture notes that you can readily uh, review and implement within your school, hands-on labs for students to actually gain hands-on experience rather than simply learn theoretical concepts, knowledge checks, they're even gifted with badges, uh, if they want to continue with certification, they also have a, a path towards that, and project exercises, real-life problems, real-life uh, projects that they can actually work on, right? Maybe building a website and so on. So this is an example screenshot of the platform. So uh, it, it can work with uh, your Moodle, Moodle uh, platform, right? So AWS content is regularly updated. There's a built-in lab, knowledge check, and it works with Moodle, right? And uh, this is an example, a case uh, reference. So Singapore Management University implemented it way back 2019. And when they ran it, close to 300 individuals passed uh, the certification exam with an average of 92% pass rate. So the survey that ran after the, the program were in, did it help them improve their ability to land a job, an internship? Do they feel more confident about the skill? Right? Across the board, 90% said it really helped them boost their employability, help them land an internship, a job, right? So again, that's a free program we offer, uh, AWS Academy. Also, yeah, so that, that's my talk. Hopefully, it was insightful. I just want to end with saying that, you know, AI is uh, exciting, right? If applied to relevant use case scenarios. So we're working closely with Nathalia Webb. Uh, to, you know, how can we leverage an AI to actually enhance the student learning experience. So I'm sharing my email, uh, paolobal at amazon.com, if you want some white papers about digital skills economy, data-driven institution, I'm willing to give that for free. Just email me a copy. And again, thank you so much, Ms. Sharon, uh, sir, uh, sir Roy, so for inviting AWS uh, for this Moodle Moon 2024. Thank you and marami salamat. Thank you very much, Mr. Paolo Balina, sir. It's nice to have you back. And thank you also for sharing how AWS and I, AI transforms education and the various industries. Now, um, do we have any questions for our speaker? Yes, ma'am, from table number seven. So I have my technical architect also there. <laughs> you want to add this kidding? Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Andrea Sant, University of Guam. University of Guam experienced a pretty devastating hack a few years ago. It went into a lot of time and money to recover for, from it. So I have questions about data security, privacy, and maybe I'll invoke um, Ms. Gretchen's metaphor from yesterday about AI as a, a family pet in the house that you keep feeding. So Amazon gets a lot of my personal paycheck, the retail section. So from a grumpy professor's point of view or persona, um, if I keep feeding our university data into this ginormous cat or whatever house pet, um, what assurance can you give about um, how my data is secured or what, how it will be used afterwards or sold to third-party vendors? Great question, right? So that's a, that's a great topic, data security. Actually, we really talked about that yesterday. But just to touch a bit on data security, how can you make sure that your data is not used for other purposes, right? I think the biggest hesitation of universities in adopting new technology, right, is, is my data secure? So what AWS does is rather than use your data and bring it to our platform with the risk of, you know, with, with the advantage of training it to our, uh, enhance our machine learning model, what we do is we provide you, based on your environment, the technology of AWS. 
So whatever data that you have, it's safe within your environment. It is not used to train our own machine learning model or foundational model. But that's one. The second one is talk about access and security, right? So we have a lot of security measures in place that uh, ensure that whoever is uh, who needs to access the data is only limited to that specific group, right? There are a lot of ways to uh, limit the use. One is identity and access management, right? Multi-factor authentication to make sure that those who only need access are the right people. There's also uh, an aspect of AI to it, right? Like uh, AI-assisted anomaly detection. If you're based in the Philippines, you don't have any access if it's only in the Philippines and then you find out that somebody's trying to access in Guam, for example, right? So it's able to prompt, uh, prompt you that there's been a potential uh, breach that you need to act, it's being accessed uh, outside of your domain, right? Philippines or Guam and so on, right? So there's uh, many ways to look at it, uh, but I just want to highlight in terms of the data is we provide you with the environment we deploy our solution in your environment and we have a lot of security protocols in place to ensure that only the people who need to access that data uh, is given access. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for assuring us because privacy is actually an equally important concept. Any other question? Okay, there being no other question at this point, I'd like to once again invite Ms. Cheryl Orville to please join me on stage to present the Certificate of Appreciation. Moodle Moon Philippines 2024 presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Paolo Balinas in grateful recognition for sharing his invaluable knowledge and experience to the participants of the Moodle Moon Philippines 2024.